Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and let's face it, most days investing is as exciting as watching grass grow in the desert. But then a dividend hits your account, and it's like Christmas, your birthday, and the first day you discovered Jack Daniels, all in one. Nation, there is nothing like counting those dividend checks. I've built a dividend stream of $895 a month, cash I can count on in seven of my favorite dividend stocks. I'll reveal those seven stocks and the risks in each so you can make your own decision, but stick around after that and I'll show you why I'm actually reinvesting those dividends in something else lately. Our first stock, International Business Machines, ticker IBM, says a lot about my dividend strategy and the rest of these stocks. With just a 3.6% dividend, I'm not getting rich on this cash flow, but this is not really why I bought the stock. I collect some good dividends each month, but I'm not living off them, so I'm more about those price returns at this point. Now, until recently, those price returns have been god-awful for IBM. I mean, this is a stock that fooled even Warren Buffett, with the Oracle of Omaha down $2 billion before selling out. And until that rebound last year, it hadn't done anything but fall for a decade. But even though it hasn't captured the headlines like OpenAI or Microsoft, IBM has a strong upside in artificial intelligence. IBM was one of the first on the scene with its natural language AI Watson system in 2010 and has expanded that over the years. Now, yeah, IBM still lags Microsoft and Google in its capabilities, but the company is carving out a share of that market and even a sliver of the generative AI market is gonna be worth billions. And this company is a cash flow machine, generating over $11 billion in free cash flow over the last year. That is more than enough to pay the $6 billion in dividends and buy back 400 million shares. On 110 shares, I make about $60 a month on a quarterly dividend, but I'm already sitting on a 39% gain since last July. We'll get back to that list of my favorite dividend stocks to buy, but if you've ever wondered what's in my portfolio or wanna see the stocks I'm buying right now, you can by joining me on the Blossom Social Investing app. It's like Twitter, Wall Street Bets, and the Wall Street Journal had a baby. The app was created by YouTuber Brandon Beavis for investors and by investors. I just started using it last year and love the app for getting ideas and sharing my portfolio. And this is so much more than just another social media app. You can connect your brokerage accounts or just input your portfolio to track all your stocks in one place. You're going to see insights like portfolio percentages and average dividend yield across the entire group. You'll also be able to join more than 100,000 investors in the social feed to see what everyone is talking about. I've shared my portfolio on the app and it's totally free to download. So look for that link I'm gonna leave in the description or just snap a shot of the QR code here and check it out. I started buying shares of Walgreens Boots Alliance, ticker WBA last November on research that pointed to a sale of the company. Folks, management mistakes and overcompensation have destroyed this stock, but that along with still strong cash flow in some parts of the business have, have set this up to be a private equity wet dream. And I'm seeing hints that that is the direction the company is going. At first, the company offloaded its pension debt tied to the Boots pharmacy chain in the UK, a move that's gonna allow it to sell the segment. Walgreens has also started selling off investments in other businesses like its Chilean drugstore chain and shares in Sincora, formerly drug wholesaler Amerisource Borgen. And understand folks, these are all classic moves to downsize a company into its core cash flowing business. That nearly $7 billion in proceeds from a boot sale, along with other resources, is going to help it pay down long-term debt of $30 billion. And while the company shocked Wall Street this year by cutting its dividend for the first time in 47 years, it is all still part of that plan. This is a company cutting costs, selling non-core assets, and setting itself up for a sale of the entire company, or or to take itself private in a leveraged buyout. Even on the reduced dividend, I still collect about $42 a month on 500 shares and a 4.6% dividend yield, but I think the company gets an offer of $30 a share or more in a bid to go private over the next year. Walgreens had already been a target of KKR for a buyout in 2019 at $70 billion. That's almost four times its current value. Now they can get it for $25 billion. One of my biggest dividend stocks is one I wasn't expecting much from, the ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF, ticker BITO. This one I bought 1,500 shares in early last year to keep my exposure to Bitcoin after BlockFi shut down, and the stock is up 51% since then. Even better, I've collected just over $2,650 in dividends since then, or, or about $220 a month. You can see it's not a consistent dividend, but it has worked out to be about an 11% cash yield. Now, as Bitcoin approaches its prior peak, I might start taking some of that money off the table to lock in those profits, but this one continues to spin off that solid cash flow. Nation, you know I could pray to the altar of dividend stocks all day long, but there are three problems all dividend investors need to understand, risks that might be a harsh reality for some of you. First, you need to know which is more important to you, that cash flow or the total return. 
everyone likes a little cash in their pockets, but if you're not living off your dividends, then maybe you want some of that price return as well. In fact, some investors may want more price return and less dividend yield. It, it all depends on what you need. And I say this because I see too many investors going all in on dividend stocks with those yields of nine or 10% and up and, and then scratch their heads when the price falls. The fact is folks, any company or fund paying out those double digit dividend yields is probably gonna be producing a big fat goose egg on the price at best and probably gonna be eating into your capital a little. On the other hand, these companies offering a three to 5% dividend yield may not put much cash in your pockets, but, but are saving money back to grow the business and those dividends. So it's just a balancing act. And again, just depends on where you wanna be between more cash now and possibly a falling stock price or, or less yields now and a higher stock price and cash flow in the future. Another big mistake I see dividend investors make is not understanding the difference between qualified and non-qualified ordinary dividends. In the US, dividends are taxed in one of two ways, either as ordinary dividends or qualified dividends. While qualified dividends are taxed at either zero, 15, or 20%, depending on your income, any amount you collect in those ordinary dividends each year is gonna be added to your regular income and taxed at those income tax rates. You can see the difference this makes in the rates here. Let's say you make 150,000 a year, collect 10,000 in those dividends, but not knowing the difference between qualified and ordinary dividends, could cost you more than $1,300 in taxes. For a dividend stock or a dividend to be qualified or get that lower tax rate, you have to hold the stock for more than 60 days around the ex-dividend date. So on the day when it's decided who gets that dividend, you need to have held the stock for a total of 60 days, whether that's 60 days before, after, or 60 days around that date. Now, if that weren't confusing enough, some dividends are never qualified, no matter how long you hold the stock. Any dividend ETF using options as part of the strategy or some of those popular monthly payers only pay ordinary dividends, income that you're gonna be taxed at at those higher tax rates. It doesn't mean you can't invest in them, but you definitely need to know if your stock is paying qualified dividends or not and, and build that into your decision whether to buy it or not. The third point here, and we'll get back to our dividend list with a surprise sleeper stock, but you also need to understand the difference between a high yield dividend stock and one that's only high yield because the price has crashed. Now, I know that might be as clear as mud, but remember the dividend yield of a stock is just the annual dividend amount divided by the current stock price. Using IBM as an example, the most recent dividend of $1.66 a share would be about $6.64 a year on that four quarterly payments. That $6.64 divided by the $180 share price gives us a 3.6% dividend yield. Now let's be honest, that 3.6% yield might not persuade a lot of investors, but now what happens if the stock falls to $120 a share where it was early last year? Since IBM and most dividend payers try not to cut their payment amount, that same $6.64 annual payment would surge to a 5.5% dividend yield on that $120 stock price. So now at that 5.5% yield, IBM is turning a few heads, but there's a trap here that has caught more than a few of those investors. If the company's profits and cash flow haven't deteriorated too much or or if it can still easily cover that dividend, it might not be anything to worry about. But if that falling stock price is because of that steep and persistent drop in cash flow, that high dividend yield could be unsustainable. Nation, just ask anyone that got suckered into double digit dividend yields in stocks like AT&T, NYCB, and yes, even your bow tie buddy in MPW over the last few years. Investing on those high yields can get the rug pulled out of you when the company is forced to cut the dividends to protect its cash flow. So just always check the stock price history on those high yield dividend stocks. If the price has fallen, boosting that yield, it's not a deal breaker, but you need to make extra sure that the company still has that cash flow to support the dividend long term. I've been critical on Intel, ticker INTC in the past, but started building a small position mid last year. The stock had plunged after the dividend cut and was trading for an attractive valuation with money from the CHIPS Act coming, as well as a refresh in the consumer PC buying cycle. At just under $34 a share, my dividend yield was still only 1.5%, but like the others on this list, I wasn't buying for that yield, but for the price upside since I'm not living on my dividends yet anyway. Now, this one was a tough one because as I've mentioned in other videos, I don't think Intel gets its competitive advantage back in semiconductors and trying to split its focus building a foundry business as well isn't a smart move, but, but they still have a good market share in PCs and that increased demand in PC buying over the next year is gonna help lift the shares. At just over 10,000 invested, it's only about $10 a month in dividends. So not something that's gonna move the needle a whole lot. And of all the stocks on this list, 
This is probably the one I'll cut the soonest, taking my 18% profit and putting it in something with a little bit higher yield. Now, this next dividend stock is painful, but I'm still holding on to shares of Medical Properties Trust, ticker MPW. MPW is the largest owner of hospitals in the world with 442 properties and rare international exposure for a REIT, operating in 34 US states and nine countries. It's about 60% of the portfolio in the United States, but also 22% in the UK and throughout Europe. Now my cost basis here is just under $7 a share from last year, but the stock has plunged on a combination of interest rates killing commercial real estate, problems in the healthcare sector, and management's bailing out two of its largest tenants. Now the shares still pay 15 cents per share dividend four times a year, a persuasive 16% yield on the current price, and even an 8.5% yield on my average cost for the stock. On about 3,000 shares, I make $150 a month from the dividend. It looks like the stock may be finally turning around. Shares are up 18% in the last month alone and a trend I've been talking about on the channel. With health insurance stocks falling on higher medical costs and increased procedures, we could see improved hospital profitability flow down to better cash flow for these medical real estate owners like MPW. Funds from operations are expected lower by 10% this year, but, but the company is still forecast to produce $1.57 in that FFO. And, is trading at just two times on a price to FFO basis. That is a fraction of the 12 times multiple on the stock traded in 2021, and a bounce back to even six times price to FFO multiple would be a $10 stock. Now, this stock will continue to face pressure until interest rates start coming down, but at that point, we should start seeing improvement in the outlook and property valuations. We're coming up on my favorite dividend stock right now, but you know, I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now this next dividend stock isn't a stock, but an ETF, the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income Fund, the JEPI. I highlighted the JEPI in a recent video on ranking my favorite dividend ETFs, and I wanted to include it in this list for that safe, stress-free idea of fund investing. The fund invests in defensive, large cap stocks like insurers, consumer staples, and pharmaceuticals. You see here, it's all those bellwether stocks like AbbVie, Coca-Cola, and United Health. That's going to give it the safety when the market tumbles. Then the portfolio managers sell those call options on the S&P 500, that broad stock market index, to generate the cash flow for an 8% dividend yield. You see how it does this here. It has a $55 million position against the portfolio in sold call options or other instruments to produce that 8% dividend. So it's selling to another investor the right to buy some of those assets for that immediate cash return. This is my highest yield in the group, and since it's a diversified fund with the risk spread out across 100 plus stocks, I feel safer putting more money into it than that three to 5% cap I have on individual stocks. With about 45,000 invested in the fund, I collect just over $300 a month in dividends, more than any other stock. Now the downside to the JEPI is that these are non-qualified ordinary dividends, so the cash flow is added to my income each year and taxed at those income rates that can eat away at how much you're actually collecting. So if you're not living off the dividends, I'd keep this one in a retirement account so you aren't taxed each year on the cash. Now, I know it's gonna sound weird, maybe even hypocritical in a dividend investing video to say, I'm actually investing less in dividend stocks lately, but even for us dividend investors, there are very good reasons to have more money in other stocks right now. Nation, over the last few years, we've seen the market dominated by tech and those growth stocks. And even with that drop in some of those pandemic growth darlings, it's clear we're in an era of tech returns. The trend to artificial intelligence, internet of things, and the cloud has produced returns you just can't find in dividend stocks, and every investor needs that long-term growth. Higher interest rates over the last two years have also hit dividend stock prices and those typical dividend sectors. With the yield on money markets and bonds jumping past 5%, a lot of investors have just decided to ditch stocks for those safer yields. And the Fed is expected to start cutting interest rates this year, which should help those dividend yields look more attractive again, but rates are still gonna be higher than they have in the past, and that could continue to weigh on dividend stocks. Then the biggest reason I'm just shifting more of my dividends to growth is the ginormous tax bite the government takes out of my ass every single year. Folks, even if your dividends are that qualified type and you're paying 15%, you still lose that money every year. Just look at what happens to a $1,000 investment into shares of Coca-Cola each month. Over 26 years, you're gonna lose almost $50,000 of dividends to taxes. That's money that could have kept growing for you. Now, obviously, I still love dividends and will hold most of these until they pry them from my cold, dead hands. There's no better feeling than seeing the dividend check hit your account. Sometimes it's that critical motivation you need to stick with your investing plan. 
Just know that every investor needs a balance between cash flow and growth. Alibaba Group Holdings, ticker BABA, just became a dividend stock this year, and I'm not entirely sure it's gonna stay that way. The company initiated its first dividend of a dollar a share when it reported fourth quarter earnings in February. And basically what management was saying here was it has too much cash sitting around to invest in this environment. So it's returning some of that to its shareholders. Now, Alibaba has been an absolute dog for the past three years, falling first on the government crackdown of tech giants in 2021, then as the economy struggled under a developing property crisis. I started investing last year and have added more each time it falls to around $70 a share. With 130 call option contracts and a 1,200 share position, it's the largest position in my portfolio right now. Now, holding those call options instead of the stock means I don't get that dividend except for my 1,200 shares. But there's another reason I think Alibaba will be my best investment over the next few years. There is a tremendous amount of value hidden in these shares. At around eight times on a price to earnings basis, it is ridiculously cheap for a company growing revenue at 8% plus a year. Now, the struggling economy and competition has weighed on the shares over the last couple of years, but this is one stock that comes up on every value investor's list. In fact, Michael Burry has increased his stake in BABA to the largest in his portfolio at just over 6% of assets. So here, maybe not so much a dividend play, but when those shares reach back into the 90s and higher, I'm gonna take profits and create my own dividends. See all the stocks in my portfolio and join over 100,000 investors on the Blossom Investing app with the free download link in the description or click on the video to the right for the five top dividend ETFs ranked from best to worst. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.